All right, I would like to call the Prince William County School Board to order. A motion is in order for the approval of closed session agenda. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilk. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, to approve the closed session agenda as recommended. <laughs> I have a second. Mr. Chair. Ms. Uh, Ralston. I second. Um, uh, any discussion? Please vote. Looks like they turned the volume up on these, right? No, yes? We wanted to hear you. Outstanding. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Excellent. No. We turned down. I agree with you on that. The vote is five yes. Okay. Um, Three no. Two no. Two no. Motion passed. Two absent. Two absent. Two absent. Uh, moving on to the motion to enter closed session. A motion is in order. Mr. Mr. Wilk. Chairman, I move that pursuant to Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711 that the Prince William County School Board enter closed session for the following reasons. One, to discuss and consider the assignment appointment performance disciplining and resignation of specific employees, appointees, or officers of the school board under Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711A, 1, and 8. Two, to discuss and take action on student disciplinary matters relating to the long-term or specific student for, uh, student under Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711A, 2, and 8. Three, to consult with division counsel and receive legal advice regarding actual probable litigation, such as consultation and briefing in open session will adversely affect the negotiation or litigating posture of our school board under Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711A and 7. Four, to consult the superintendent staff regarding performance of specific personnel under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A. A1 and five to consult with division counsel, the superintendent and staff regarding the performance of specific students related changes to school board policies under Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711A2 and eight. Mr. Chairman. Do you have a second, Ms. Ralston? Second. Um, any discussion? Please vote. Yeah, I voted. What are you talking about? What do I got to do? Here. What do I have to do? What did you do? I still said just change vote. What is that? Where did, where you, oh. Red. So I just voted. So your machine's not working. Machine? Your machine. <laughs> I, think, I think this was Dr. Waltz recommended this system. Wow. The vote is six yes, two absent. <laughs> Motion passed. Okay. Um, the Prince William County School Board will now enter closed session and return to open session in approximately uh, 45 minutes. Okay, the Prince William County School Board is now returning to open session from closed session. Uh, we do have one closed session action agenda, uh, action, closed session action agenda item. And can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wilk. I move that the Prince William County School Board waive those provisions of policy 124 student representatives to the school board relating to the timing of the selection process in the 1920 school year in order to allow the school division committee to meet over the summer of 19, interview students on their return to school and present recommendations to the school board by the second school board meeting in, in October 2019. Do I have a second? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Ralston. I second. Ms. Ralston seconds. Any discussion? Please vote. The vote is eight yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Moving on to the adoption of the closed session consent agenda. Motion is in order. 
Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilk. I move that the Prince William, oh, the same one, why is it not loading? You know, it's, it's not in there though. Yeah, it's, 801's not, okay, F5. Talking about 801. Anyone, anyone else have it? I have it. Do you want to go ahead and read yeah. it? Uh, it? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session consent agenda as recommended. Yep. Mr. Chairman? Do you, uh, Ms. Do you have a second? Ms. Williams? Second. Any discussion? Please vote. My vote didn't show up. My vote, my vote didn't show up last time, but somehow it, it still voted. They said I voted, but I didn't vote with them. They came up and said that I yeah. showed up. Did, you, did yours show up? No. All in favor of um, the uh, motion for uh, approving, approval of the consent agenda, raise your hand, and aye. aye. Okay, any opposed? So that's 8-0. Moving on to the um, closed session certification, that'll be 9.01. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Wilk. I move that pursuant to Virginia Code sections 2.2-3712, the closed session of the Prince William County School Board meeting of April 24, 2019 be certified by adopting the following resolution. Now therefore be resolved that the school board hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard and discussed or considered by our school board. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Uh, I'm sorry, we need a minute. Any opposed? No. So that passes 8-0 as well. Okay, can we have a moment? You can have a moment. We're going to move to positively PWCS while you're having your moment. Thank, Thank you. you. We are kicking off the business of our meetings with a response to the community request to hear more about the good things that our school students and staff members are accomplishing. Tonight's positively PWCS presentation spotlights the results of a grant given by SPARC, the, educate, the school's education foundation for PWCS. Justin Wilk, our vice chairman, will introduce our guest presenters. Good evening. I am constantly amazed by the great things our schools can accomplish because of grants from SPARC. During the last school year alone, SPARC awarded 86,000 in grants for new and innovative programs that enrich the lives of our students, teachers, and staff. I'm really excited about our presentation tonight because of a grant from SPARC. Students at Fitzgerald Elementary School are programming drones that roll, flip, and fly. Kimberly Godinas, principal, has brought several students and drones with her this evening to share with us. Looking forward, here we go. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kim Godinas, the very proud principal at Fitzgerald Elementary. Dr. Latif, board members, Dr. Waltz, thank you for the invitation tonight. We are very excited to share our story with you. From start to finish, the beginning of the day to the end of the day, our kids are using drones. 100% of our kids have the opportunity to use drones. So tonight, some of our wonderful Fitzgerald staff and students are going to share with you about how we use drones in our um, education. Hi, I'm Michelle Dunphy. I'm the Instructional Technology Coach for Fitzgerald Elementary School. Um, through the SPARC grant, teachers and students have learned new skills and 
with regards to drones and drone technology. Um, this grant has helped our school with our computer science literacy. The two drones that we chose for our school are Sviro, which is a land drone, and the Parrot Mambo, which is a flying drone. Every classroom teacher has their own land drone um, for class use, and every grade level has their own flying drone. Uh, the drones are a great hands-on way to integrate computer science and curriculum, and these students will tell you about some of their experiences. Each classroom has named their drone, and um, the drones really have made the little kids feel big and made the big kids feel little, all while coding, creating models, loops, and stepping into the 21st century. Hi, my name is Brianna. I am a fifth grader. Hi, my name is Brianna. I am a fifth grader at Fanny. We have used drones to learn about the sound waves. This was fun because we got to learn about the crest and the trough. We got to fly the drones up to the crest and down to the trough. We have used spheros in a quiz. We chose to drive the sphero to correct the square when we were learning about our reference sources, which is Atlas, Encyclopedia, Dictionary, Almanac, and Thesaurus. Hi, my name is Jacoby Smith. I am a second grader at Fannie Fitzgerald Elementary School. In my classroom, I drive our spiro to lunch and I drive them to our core classes. We call our, our class Drone Pikachu. We use spiros to learn about factions and fair share. We want to invite you to our drone races this Saturday, April 27th. Hi, my name is Adam Lahabub. I am a fifth grade student from Fitzgerald Elementary School. In my class, we coded drones to make types of triangles. We dipped them in paint, then coded the shape of the triangle into the iPad using the draw coding feature. We made isosceles, scalene, and equilateral triangles, and then classified the triangles. Hi, my name is Jackie Carcamo. I am a third grade student at Fitzgerald Elementary School. We are working with an artist in England who is helping us learn more about robots and how to bring our drones to life through art. I designed a robot body and next step we will put our drone under the cup and coat it with the iPad. Hi, my name is Malaya Dixon. I'm a fourth grade student from Fitzgerald Elementary School. Through my work with Tech Club, I have been learning about ways drones can help our everyday life. When I grow up, I'm going to start a technology service where I connect art and technology. I want a drone to paint pictures or like draw something that I program. During our international project, we learn about drones that can draw and paint. I also want to start my own drone dock working company. It's called Drones and Dogs. Thank you to the board, Dr. Waltz and Spark, for supporting our vision of building community thinkers. Um, our students have a short demonstration of our drones, and thank you for your time. They also made um, some drone art, just to say thank you for having us. So this is our Sviro, our land drone. And this is our um, Parrot Mambo, which is our flying drone. And Jacoby was talking about changing um, the colors in order for our fraction exercise. So we had a group of them together. And then we were deciding the kids would pick a color and then decide what was fair share or what was two thirds and using the colors for the different um, Spiros and their friends collaboratively discovering and looking at different um, fractions. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you all very much. That was fantastic. Very excited to see all of that. And, and the program is this Saturday, April 27th. At what time? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock at the school. At, at Kilby, or Fitzgerald. Fanny Fitzgerald. Fanny Fitzgerald Elementary. Okay, thank you all very much. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, sure, Ms. Williams. I just wanted to thank the young ladies who came to show us the presentation with the drones. That's really, really cool. And I like that Spiro one. It's like uh, the this, this spear from Jurassic Parks. And I dig it changes color. I just dig it changes colors, too. That's very cool. So thank you, ladies. Um, I just wanted to say to, the, to Fanny Fitzgerald School, um, Fanny Fitzgerald was a great friend of mine. And I know she would be just thrilled to see what's happening at her school. Thank you very much. Ms. Ms. I'm really glad you are in my district. Thank you, Fanny Fitzgerald School. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all. That was great. So I would like to call the, this meeting of the Prince William County School Board to order. A couple things to note tonight. Mr. Gil Trenum, who um, is a <laughs> Texas Tech graduate, um, we had a, a, a bet on the game. And uh, I serve uh, and, and work at the Board of Visitors at the University of Virginia. And so because Texas Tech Red Raiders lost the game, he is now wearing a UVA hat uh, and an orange tie. <laughs> Mr. Deutsch is also wearing the colors of the University of Virginia. Very excited to have that. So, um, yeah, wahoo wah, right, right. So uh, it was a great week for Virginia, winning the national championship for the first time ever. So congratulations. I'd like to congratulate, and I'll take a moment to congratulate our student member. Am I allowed to publicly say where you're going? Can I do that? Is that public? Miss Annabelle is going to be going to Virginia Tech to study study uh, politics, economics, theater, and business. Wow. Did I get that right? That's all right. Fantastic. So it's, uh, it's been a great week for uh, Virginia, a great week for our school system. And uh, I think next we'll go to the, um, I think we'll do the Moment of Silence first by Mr. Justin Wilk. Okay, everyone take a moment of silence, please. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. If we have any students who'd like to come up to the podium to lead us in the pledge, please feel free. Come on up, sir. And um, the microphone will probably need to be raised for your height. Um, so come on up and uh, we'll face that way. Tell us your name, school, or? I am Matthew Ryan Jones of Forest Park High School. Wow, wow. okay. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the public meeting agenda. A motion is in order. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilk. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. Do I have Mr. a second? Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. Second. Any discussion? Please vote. Oh, vote is eight yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Moving on to the adoption of the consent agenda, a motion is in order. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilk. Uh, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. Second. Outstanding, any discussion? Okay, please vote. The vote is eight yes, unanimous, motion passed. Thank you, B. During this time on the agenda, the student representative and alternates will speak to have, uh, will have an, al um, have an opportunity to introduce themselves and share their interests. Today we have Ms. Annabelle Bergeron of the Brentsville District High School. 
to tell us a little bit about what's going on in the student world. Good evening. Tonight I will be speaking on behalf of Sasan. I hope everyone had a lovely, fun-filled spring break. I know the students needed a break with testing just around the corner. These past few weeks, I had the pleasure of revisiting Woodbridge SCA and anyone that wanted to participate in the meeting. They brought forth interesting points of discussion. The first topic was about databases. The students noted the addition of JSTOR to the database that Prince William County Schools uses. But they suggested continuously branching out from the currently used databases to newer, more relevant databases. Newer databases could help students in all grade levels stay up to date with credible, widely recognized, and more sources. A great example of a new database would be EBSCO. Currently, kids in AP Capstone use that database, so I suggest talking with those students to evaluate the worthwhileness of it. The next item of discussion focused around bringing the topic of Windows back to the conversation. The student leaders suggested that since building windows on the exterior of classrooms to face outside is infeasible, the county should look into building windows in the wall area that's connected to the hallway if possible. This would give the rooms a more open feel. The student leaders also suggested looking into the possibility for skylights in the hallway in order to get some sunlight in the building. As we all know, more sun leads to a better day, so ensuring that each student can get a glimpse of the nice weather would benefit their classroom studying. If people are concerned with safety, the teachers could place a covering over the windows in order to block the view of the classrooms in case of emergencies. This ne next part actually made the rest of my day. The student leaders said they appreciate the quality of the staff, specifically pointing to the Woodbridge Senior High School librarians. With the setup of fun events, green screens for silly pictures, and many more initiatives, the students praised the work of their librarians to promote a welcoming and positive educational environment. So if anyone from Woodbridge is watching, please share this message with them. On this board meeting, student representative version of Student Spotlight, I'm going to point out a few students. Recently, Future Business Leaders of America held their state conference, and several Prince William County School students attended it. Placing fourth or higher earns the student a spot at the national conference. Sahas Gawada from Battlefield placed first in public speaking. From Forest Park High School, Matthew Clifton, third place in coding and programming and game stimulation. <laughs> Calvin Lewin, fourth place, network concepts. Mateo Valerde and Ryan Buckingham, fourth place in business e ethics. From Forest Park High School, Daniel Gigi, second place, business calculations. Zuri Jones, second place, pu public speaking. And from Potomac High School, Lily Jones, fourth place, coding and programming and game simulations. Thank you. I want to take a minute to also mention that Annabelle was the lead actress. Is that correct, Dr. Waltz? In Let's uh, the tell, cat in the hat in Susical the musical at Brentsville Brentsville District, District, High, District School. High School. Outstanding. I was there. How did it go? Outstanding, and she was amazing in her role. Fantastic. And all the other students did a great job as well. And congratulations to all the students who've put on terrific musicals across the county. If there are still any left, um, you know, if you're in the public, please attend. They are fantastic events. Thank you so much. Next, we'll move on to citizen comments. Um, citizen comment time. It looks like tonight we just have uh, four people that signed up, and um, everyone that signed up will have a chance to speak. And uh, I will call their names. Please come up to the front. Um, we have um, Raina Ketch, Matt Jones, Michelle Zhang, and Kejan Waybright. And I think Matt Jones will be go going first. You have three minutes to speak, and the clerk will keep the time. The lights on the monitor will indicate your progress. The yellow light will signify you should sum up your position. Red indicates your time is up, and you should stop. Please use proper decorum and manners while at the podium. If you do not do so, you will be asked to step aside. Please give your name and address for the record when you approach the podium. Our first speaker, again, is Matt Jones. You say name and address? All right, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, and thank you for giving me a minute of your precious time. I am Matthew Ryan Jones, and I'm here to represent Forest Park High School and the fifth annual Suicide Awareness Walk. The Suicide Awareness Walk is an event created by Hannah Kolkmeyer to raise awareness about the growing epidemic of suicides within the United States. It has been five years since our first walk, and the event has done great things to raise awareness of the, ment 
of mental health issues that, are often, that often exist unrecognized and undiagnosed. Our movement has grown since its beginnings, and we have seen our numbers increase with each year. We hope to raise awareness and advocate for certain changes within our schools. The efforts of the board members who currently sit before me are recognized and appreciated. However, we hope to push even harder for more change, which has a higher volume of counselors and professionals trained to handle mental health issues. The walk will be held on May 18th from 8.30 to 11.30, and we will walk from Forest Park High School to Hilton and back again. On behalf of Forest Park, I would like to invite all of you to walk with students all across the county, as well as Congressman Jerry Connolly of District 11 and State Senator Jeremy McPike, who will also be attending. Your attendance will be appreciated. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, Raina Ketch. Hi, my name is Raina Ketch, and I have an anxiety disorder and depression. It's not something I usually share, but I thought now might be a good time. My anxiety has been part of my life since I was very young. It started with separation anxiety from my parents, and it grew into social anxiety. I've had a very far, hard time talking to new people and making friends, and it would make me so nervous that I would throw up. As I've gotten older, I've found ways to cope, but it still affects me daily. Some days are worse than others, and it can be difficult to get out of bed a lot of the time, and going to school seems impossible on occasion, but I manage. However, it's been especially hard these past three years. Everything seemed to be going my way at the beginning of sophomore year. I had solid friendships, good grades, and a great relationship. I didn't think it could get any better. Then that one fateful night came along when my best friend decided she was going to attempt suicide. It was this moment that I realized that mental awareness was so important to us. And I didn't think things could get much worse, but I was wrong. My relationship fell apart before my eyes. I tried to talk it out with him, and he called me crazy and insane. It made me question myself, it made me hate myself, and I felt like I wasn't good enough. I started to lose myself in the thought that I was losing everything. I spent the entire summer by the side of my best friend, hoping that maybe she'd be my comfort zone, and by the end of the summer, she had left me too. And it really took a toll on me. I didn't know who I could trust, and I cut myself out of all of my social groups and isolated myself to my room. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, and I had no motivation to do anything, and I was afraid to leave my house. And the thought of getting out of bed made me physically ill. I didn't know who I was anymore, and honestly, no one did. At the beginning of junior year, I had a really tough time the thought of facing everyone and everything that I had gone through the year before made me physically ill before I went to school. And I'd come home and cry myself to sleep at night. And as we went on, I tried to reconnect with friends at, that I had lost touch with and they all dismissed me. And it made sense to me because I always thought to myself, who would want to be friends with such a mess of a human being? And I was trying my hardest to fix my, uh, my mistakes, but they never forgave me. And that was the night I decided I was going to try to take my own life. I thought about um, drowning myself or maybe cutting myself with a knife, maybe overdosing on pills. But I ended up not going through with any of it. I dragged myself into my parents' room and begged them for help. I, it was my last resort. I had waited so long to tell them any of this out of the fear that they would dismiss me or they would be mad or something would go wrong. And my beautiful mother here ended up holding me and just telling me it was all going to be okay. My parents started keeping a much closer eye on me and as well as my friends that I guess I didn't realize I had, I was just looking in the wrong place for them. Last summer, I finally went to the doctor and was officially diagnosed with anxiety and depression. And I started going to therapy and taking medicine to help me get through and getting help was the best decision I had ever made. I have learned ways to cope with my disabilities, and even though it can still knock me down, I now know I can get back up. The Suicide Awareness Walk is a large way the community can help break the stigma around mental illness. People need to know that mental health is nothing to be ashamed of. Too many people suffer in silence. They're afraid to speak out and get help. This is why the walk is so important to me personally. Um, it raises awareness of the daily struggles so many go through. It's a small glimpse into the reality of these people who have to put on a smile every day and act like it's all fine. I hope this walk gives them hope and reminds them that they're not alone as it did for me. Suicide is an epidemic in today's society and we need you to help end the stigma. Walk for those who feel they can't, 
for those who struggle every day in silence. Walk for those who need a sign to live and for those we've lost. Walk because you care. Walk for awareness. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle Zhang. Um, good evening, my name is Michelle Zhang and my address should be on file. Um, I'm currently a senior for Potomac Senior High School. I'm here today to, as a member of White Street. White Street is the award-winning youth volunteer program of the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth that focuses on a, promoting a healthier Virginia. I'm here to, to talk about how White Street's 24-7 campaign is partnering with Virginia school divisions adopt, implement, and enforce 100% comprehensive tobacco and e-cigarette free school policies. Under 100% comprehensive policy, tobacco and e-cigarette use, possession, and distribution is prohibited by anyone, anywhere, at any time. In Prince William County, you ha all have already shown a strong commitment to the health and safety of our school and community. At Potomac Senior High School, myself and another student also made a step to help with the communication and the enforcement of the policies by meeting with my principal, Mr. Wright, to provide resources like free signage and 24-7 toolkit. Recently in Virginia, a statewide comprehensive bill was passed to help make all schools in Virginia 100% free from all types of tobacco, and we are here to help develop a partnership so your policies reflect the changes to be made. And your folders on your left-hand side, um, you will find copies of the current tobacco-free policies in addition to a letter that outlines the revision to become comprehensive. Um, some, of the some of the examples of those updated include remove the ability for designated smoking areas to be allowed on school property, strengthening the definitions of tobacco products and tobacco use and to include electronic vapor devices and products containing nicotine. Explain the definition of property to include off-site events and language about owned, leased, rented, or chartered by the division for all property. Prohibiting the use and the distribution of tobacco, products containing nicotine and electronic smoking devices by staff, contractor, and visitors, whether on or off-site. And offering recessions, referrals, succession referrals to staff and students who want to overcome tobacco addiction. Once you, once you decide to adopt a comprehensive policy, the 24-7 campaign has great ways to support implementing and enforcing the policy. First, we will provide free tobacco signage to all schools in our division. Which is, and second, our free tobacco and e care free school toolkits will be sent to all schools in your division. Third, we'll help to spread words of the updates by holding a celebratory event at our school. On um, behalf of 24-7 campaign, I thank you for allowing me to present at school board meeting and hope to hopefully begin a partnership to ensure our school division is 100% comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cajun Waybright. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Cajun, and I'm from Alamo Drafthouse Cinema, the new movie theater that just opened in Woodbridge in June. Um, first off, just want to kind of address the potential elephant in the room that we do have Drafthouse in our name. And that's um, kind of what we want to talk about today, just because that's, um, although we are a restaurant like any other, and we serve some really great craft beer and some wine, we're so much more than that. Right, and people tend to gravitate towards Alamo for our strict policies, one of which is our age policy. So the only people watching films in our auditoriums are adults or um, otherwise people who are accompanied by adults. So whether you're watching Toy Story 4 at nine in the morning or Avengers at midnight, you're either an adult or you're accompanied by one. Um, our second important policy is there's a zero tolerance for any sort of misconduct or negative behavior or anything that could be deemed disruptive to your neighbors. So there's no talking or texting or that sort of thing. Um, 
and you know, we might give you one more warning and then we're gonna ask you to leave. And the way we look at it is we are a movie theater that was created by movie lovers for movie lovers. It's a temple, in my opinion, and so we're trying to create the most interesting and meaningful and respectful experience we can for all ages. Um, and I just wanna talk a minute about all the different programs and initiatives we offer for families and young people. Um, the first of which is Kids Camp. Kids Camp is a program we offer during any um, any school break. So whether it's winter break or spring break or summer break from June through August, every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m., we'll put up a former kid's picture on screen. Could be something like the Lorax or the Lego movie or never ending story, that sort of thing. But it's at 10 a.m. and you pick your price. So, you know, as a consumer, you pay either $1, $3 or $5 and we donate all that money to charity, whether it's a local nonprofit or a school or what have you. Um, we also have a rotating series called PBS Kids, which is in the same vein as Kids Camp. So we throw up, you know, three episodes of a, a PBS Kids program on screen on a Saturday morning. It's pick your price, and we donate all the proceeds to our local PBS affiliate. Uh, we have an initiative called Alamo for All, which is, of course, for all ages, but we raise the lights a little bit. We lower the volume of the sound, which really creates and cultivates an inclusive experience for new parents and anybody with sensory needs. Um, for some of our first run films, we have family parties. So if you're coming to see Toy Story 4, you know, in June, for example, depending on which showtime you pick, it might be a family party. And what that means, it's early on a Saturday morning, we'll have stations set up in the theater. So if you come in, you can kind of come in with your kids and every station will have crafts that you can make to kind of be themed after the film, or there might be a station that stimulates your kid's mind and, and so forth. Um, and then finally, one cool thing that we do every year is we have Teacher Appreciation Week, which is certainly apt here. Um, we, in Ashburn, we've been open for five years, so we've done it every year in Ashburn. We just did it last week in Woodbridge. So from Monday through Friday, we had a bunch of teachers join us for one free movie a day, Monday through Friday. And that was open to teachers, faculty, any school staff. And then kids camp last week was cloudy with a chance of meatballs, and we had 500 kids join us. Thank you. That's I think I've met wonderful. Time. Yep. I would just like to talk at some point in the future, if anybody wants to, about ways that we could work together. Or um, if you have any questions after the evening tonight, I'd be glad to chat with you a little bit. Thank, Thank you guys you. for your time. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah. Next, we're going to go to 1701, Ms. Rita Goss, Youth for Tomorrow, Student Learning and Accountability. So good evening, Chairman Latif, school board members, and Dr. Waltz. Tonight, by request of school board members, Mrs. Satterwhite and Ms. Williams, Carolyn Custard, the Director for the Office of Student Services, will be presenting information on our important partnership with Youth for Tomorrow and the counseling services provided to students through their counselors. At this time, I invite Mrs. Custard to the podium. Mrs. Custard. Thank you, Ms. Goss. Good evening, Chairman, Dr. Latif, members of the school board, and Dr. Walsh. It is my pleasure to share information with you on a wonderful partnership with Prince William County Public Schools and Youth for Tomorrow. This partnership continues to make a positive difference in our schools, students, and families. As a part of Youth for Tomorrow's Behavioral Health Services, Prince William County Public Schools and Youth for Tomorrow began serving through students through therapeutic day treatment as a pilot program in six schools in 2012. And currently, therapeutic day treatment services are provided in 22 of our schools. Therapeutic day treatment focuses on addressing each student's mental health, emotional or behavioral needs by providing individualized and structured strategies and interventions. There is emphasis on student success with all goals and objectives reviewed and tracked weekly. A decrease in student discipline referrals and out of school suspensions are very important. The goals of the therapeutic day treatment services have a strong focus on a decrease in student mental health concerns and student discipline and an increase in student attendance. This increases student academic performance and overall student success. 
For the 2018-19 school year, therapeutic day treatment services are provided to 148 students in 22 of our schools. For the 2019-20 school year, Youth for Tomorrow will support an additional 15 schools. And this is because, unfortunately, Crossroads Counseling Center will no longer provide therapeutic day treatment services because of budget restraints and a redesign of their therapeutic day treatment program. Serving a caseload of six to eight students, each therapeutic day treatment specialist develops an individualized treatment plan and provides therapeutic interventions with their students throughout the school day. Students are taught skills to manage their behavior and mental health needs. The therapeutic day treatment specialist works collaboratively with school principals and school staff and engage weekly with the family. We are very pleased with the positive impact of the therapeutic day treatment services. Survey results indicate that there is a decrease in discipline referrals and absenteeism and an increase in grades and student participation in instruction. There was a 94% satisfaction rate from student participants, a 97% satisfaction rate from parents, and a 96% satisfaction rate from school principals and school staff. And at this time, I would like to recognize Dr. Gary Jones, Chief Executive Officer, and also some members of the Youth for Tomorrow's staff. I would like to thank them, and all of us would like to thank them for our wonderful partnership with Prince William County Schools. Could you please stand to be recognized? Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Williams. <laughs> thank you. Um, I would just like to thank you for your presentation. Um, I think that Youth for Tomorrow does a fantastic job with our school system. I know um, a few students who are involved in the program, and they think uh, very highly of it. It's very highly of the program for what they receive services in school and also outside uh, counseling services as well. Um, I just can't say enough um, for all of the work that you do, and I appreciate that you have a diverse staff too as well, um, because that makes a difference, because uh, sometimes we need to see people who look like us, whether it's male, female, or various ethnicities, and um, that is another added layer of comfort and attention to detail that I feel that the program really provides for our student body and for our parents and families. So thank you very much, and thank you for keeping us up to date. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Ms. Ralston, and then Ms. Jesse. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, glad to see you. Uh, when I took a stroll through their, uh, their, their, uh, ho uh, sorry, their uh, apartments, they weren't apartments. Oh. Yes, homes. They were the homes. And it was really, really, I'm with you that our students should be able to do quite well with you, and you have, they have, and you guys are just doing a fantastic job. I'm hoping that I can get back out and take a look and see what other great things you have done. You're just building all over the place. So here's hoping that I can get out real soon. Thank you very much for the service that you offer us. Ms. Jesse. Uh, the the crossroad. Crossroads Counseling Center. Uh, what's the source of their funding and why was there a decrease in funding? I'm not really sure, Ms. Desi. They have their own uh, funding, so I'm not sure, but I'll try to find that out for you. I, I'm just curious. It seems like a wonderful service, and I'm wondering if it's public or private or grant structured. So thank you. Yes, I appreciate it. I'll find it out. Ms. Satterwhite. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank all of you, with you for tomorrow for picking up the 15 schools so that those students aren't going without services, and that is huge. Um, thank you so much for doing that on top of the 22 schools that you're already working in. And am I right in recalling that you do this for us without, um, without any money from, from Prince William County Schools? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And that makes it even more impressive that this is a service for our families. So thank you very much for the work you do for our kids. Dr. Waltz. I just also want to thank Youth for Tomorrow and uh, Gary Jones and his team who's here. I've had the pleasure of talking with them many times and uh, seeing their uh, people out providing the services out in our schools. And one thing I would also like to add is they love to show off what they do for us and they would love to have any of you, uh, just as we had Ms. Satterwhite and Ms. Ralston, uh, go out and see their facility. They love sharing what they do. And uh, so if you ever want an experience like that, we can uh, happily uh, arrange that for you. But it's quite eye-opening and they provide some very unique services that some of our most complex and challenging children and their families really benefit from. So whether it's at the school itself or even our full 24-hour uh, treatment uh, that is provided to some of our students. It's very powerful and a great partnership, so thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, next, we'll move on to superintendent's time. Dr. Waltz. Thank you, Chairman Latif and members of the board. I had the honor of attending the Sparking Steam Introduce a Girl to Steam Day on April 4th at Colgan High School. Nearly 500 middle school girls and their parents attended to find more about careers in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Thank you to Spark, our Education Foundation, many community businesses, and to Gary Sims of Wells Fargo, who brought the idea of a STEAM event to the division about five years ago. Spring is a fantastic time to catch up on our talented students in a musical or a theatrical production. You will not be disappointed. Reagan Middle School, by the way, before I go any further, one of the people who presented up here, his name is Ryan. He's the tall one in the checkered shirt. <laughs> Speaking of talented, uh, he reached out to me in Philadelphia when we were at the National School Boards. I just finally figured out, I put it all together, Ryan, and uh, they met us, they met the board members who were there and sang, broke out in the Star Spangled Banner. The big Forest Park Choir was on their trip at the same time the National School Boards Convention. So whether it's on the streets of Philadelphia or at a musical, our kids are fantastic. Reagan Middle School presented Willy Wonka Jr. earlier this month. I was happy to attend that. The cast, crew, and adults all did a phenomenal job. I even got pulled up onto the stage to participate at one point. Uh, surprise to me. I also attended Once on This Island, presented by Potomac Senior High School. Bravo to the entire cast, crew, and volunteers under the direction of Taryn Lane. I had the great pleasure of attending the performance of the Adams Family at Osborne Park High School. Staging, lighting, choreography, sound sets, makeup, and amazing costumes all helped to create an unbelievably scary yet funny night. Battlefield High School invited me to check out International Night, which featured an international fashion show, musical performances, and food from across the globe. Kurt Boyd also did an excellent job as the student emceeing the event. Battle of the Brains took place the week before spring break. I stopped by to check out the competition between Hampton, Bevel, Stonewall, and Fred Lynn. Congratulations to Fred Lynn Middle School on their fourth consecutive win. I've also enjoyed many sports competitions across PWCS, including wrestling, lacrosse, tennis, soccer, and faculty versus students in basketball and volleyball. Congratulations to Penn Elementary School, Porter Traditional, Springwoods for all earning the School of Excellence recognition. I had the pleasure of attending celebrations for these schools over the past few weeks. The Forest Park High School Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America organization invited me to an appreciation dinner for the Prince William County Police. 
The students did a fantastic job of showing their appreciation for the hard work of our police officers and what they do for us each and every day. They fed them a, fed them a great meal and they were so appreciative. The Project Lead the Way programs at Patriot High School and Woodbridge High Schools have been named Distinguished Schools. They are among only six in the state and 340 schools in the country to be honored for their commitment to increasing student access, engagement, and achievement in the Project Lead the Way programs. Congratulations to Katie Borden, a language arts teacher at Ripon Middle School, who has received a Fulbright Scholarship Award. The Fulbright Scholarship Award is one of the most prestigious national academic awards for undergraduate students in the U.S. Right before spring break, I had a very unique opportunity to do something I had never done before and surprise the student body at Osborne Park High School. Here is a less than one minute video, which I might add has been viewed by over 22,000 people. Roll the tape. Thank and that's God, a wrap. Thank, thank, well, yeah, thank God you didn't sit on your own stinger there. Uh, okay, next we'll move on to... Uh, that way it would have got 40,000 views if you sat on your stinger. We'll take the... Proposed, uh, we will go to Board Matters, Proposed Policy 180, Office of Ombudsman, Second Reading, um, 1901. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Trenum. I move that the Prince William County School Board adopt Policy 180, Office of the Ombudsman. Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Ms. Williams. A second. Mr. Chairman, we need to clarify which policy. Yes. There are, there are yes. two attachments. So if you look at the attachments, there's a superintendent's edits to the draft Office of Ombudsman Policy, Gil. Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Mr. W w um, Deutsch. I move that we adopt a draft office of the Ombudsman policy draft for the first reading. It's the uh, committee's report. So, so let, let, first I have a motion on the table with Gil. Gil, your motion was to draft the, w which one would you like us to draft? What motion was that for? Or I assume your motion was to draft the office of the Ombudsman policy draft first reading final draft. Is that correct? Um, yes, that was that was. So discussion. we have a second on that. Willie will go on to a discussion. In this discussion, we'll talk about the superintendent's edits um, to the draft to consider the edits to um, the policy, the motions on the floor. Is that okay? Okay. So, um, Mr. Deutsch, since you brought it up, what problems do you have with the um, superintendent's edits? We can start there. Oh, I was I was supporting Mr. Trenum's motion. Uh, we were just clarifying the the document. I, I, Mr. Trenum. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would guess, um, like I said, I, I from my review of it, I don't think the edits are that significant. Uh, since they're the superintendent's uh, edits, if he wants to uh, comment on them, I'll be glad to uh, just listen to the comments. Miss Williams. Um, I had a chance to, I'm looking again at the edits. Um, I think there are some key things that should be in here, especially when it comes to um, like a D, uh, da, 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 B, when it, referral to Child Protective Services. It's just a little bit stronger um, language in there and things that should be in there for clarification, I think, from anybody outside looking in on the ombudsman's policies. I don't have any objection to what the superintendent has added. Um, there are some occasions in here also where he's added the superintendent or the board, and considering the ombudsman will be reporting to both. Um, I think that that's fair, but I would also like to hear if Mary had any input um, as well. So next I'll go to um, 
Let's go to, did Dr. Wallace, did you want to comment on anything? Or should it, can I go to Mary? Is that okay? Ms. McGowan, and then Gil. I, I, I don't see any reason why Dr. Waltz's uh, edits aren't compatible with the committee's original intent. So it does, it, as I look at it, I don't see that it changes the intent of anything that the committee wanted in there. Mr. Trenum? I, I don't see anything either. I was just, just for clarification, if, uh, if, the, if the superintendent you know, had anything you wanted to clarify, I was just going to give, give him an opportunity to, to address them. Okay. So we, we have Mr. Um, Mr. Deutsch? Um, I, I like a lot of the edits. I have two areas of concern, though. Uh, and there, there's numerous errors, and like Ms. Williams uh, stated, some of them are uh, um, more technical or add helpful uh, things to them. Uh, I've got two areas where I've got concerns, uh, Section 2 and then Section 3E. Uh, I'm fine with all of the edits outside of those. Uh, my concern under Section 2 is that um, the change here is a substantive one that would change, uh, would limit the ability of the school board itself to remove the ombudsman if it chose. Um, at this point, the way it's rewritten, it has to be done upon the recommendation of the superintendent. Um, I think keeping that as something that is a school board determination is part of our original intent and something we should stick to. Uh, Section 3E is a uh, fairly substantive change that I think um, one of the concerns I have is that um, um, uh, we, we, want, we want to be able to address um, two things um, through this ombudsman. One is concerns raised by employees, but also we want, if there are concerns from the public or from other employees about um, employees, um, we want to be able to address that as well. Um, and everything that we've got is uh, in parenthetical with of a systemic nature. So nothing that the ombudsman is going to be doing is going to be dealing with a individual personnel issue, but systemic things. But we need to still maintain the ability to address um, concerns by employees, but also concerns against employees if they come from uh, people outside of the employee group. So those are my concerns with those two sets of changes. Ms. Williams. Um, I just wanted to address one of those concerns, and that is that the um, ombudsman may uh, at times address individual concerns and employee concerns, but there are regulations in place as we had um, seen in the presentation. So there are some things that the ombudsman um, has to defer out and uh, follow policy and regulation when it comes to school employees. Um, so I think that that's actually pretty accurate in what's in there. And as far as um, the superintendent, the ombudsman only being removed by the super, by recommendation of the superintendent, I mean, we still are the board, so we can supersede that if we needed to, but the point is that we're supposed to be joint. So if the superintendent were to make the recommendation, I don't think that would be anything out of ordinary as far as policy or, I mean, as far as procedure will go. Um, that's just my opinion on, on section two. Mr. Trenum. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. As far as Section 2, uh, actually, like Ms. Williams said, it's um, uh, as far as Section 2, if the, I don't think that's an issue. Like I said, it's a school okay. board policy, and the school board, if we decide, we can always grant an exemption to our own policy. So that I, I don't see that as an issue. Uh, section uh, 3E, uh, I think that's just clarification on existing rules. Uh, the policy never did. It wasn't intended to supersede other, uh, to uh, supersede other policies. It provides another avenue. I still think that's uh, I still think that that is uh, the case, um, uh, and I think it's within the original intent. Um, I think it's important that we get a pol policy in place and keep moving forward. Um, if we need to tweak if we need to tweak it later, if we find out there are issues, we can come back and tweak it later. But Ms. Williams. Um, if it's okay with GOAT, maybe we need an amendment to the current motion that's on the floor. So, yeah, so, so. here's what we can do. We can, um, we can vote on the superintendent's edits if we're all happy with them, and then we can vote on a motion to substitute that for the first motion. Uh, I'm well, that okay? seeing as I made the first motion, I think I can withdraw it. Can I you withdraw, withdraw it and, re and re remake it? Okay, so, so your motion has been withdrawn. Okay, and I move to the Prince William County School Board Policy 180 Officer Ombudsman Version Superintendent's Edits to P180 Second Reading 42419. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Williams seconds. Any further discussions on that? Okay, Pl um, Mr. Deutsch. We're basically voting on the draft with the superintendent's edits. 
This is the final vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Deutsch. All right, sorry, one, one last comment. I just want to, on the Section 3E, Section 3E is specifically titled Complaints by and Against Individual Employees. However, in the text of the section, we strip out the part where it says against employees. So we're limiting um, the, the paragraph itself is then inconsistent with the title, and we are making a change in terms of um, the complaints to where it can only be a complaint asserted by an employee, but it then is limiting us in terms of dealing with complaints from the outside against employees. So, Ms. McGowan, can you look at that language? I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly which language you're referring to. This is 3E where it says um, the resolution of an individual concerns asserted by an employee or against employees of a systemic nature. Three E? Yeah, and the superintendent's draft. Oh, We haven't changed anything yet. Right. It's on there. We're discussing the, the right. actual. That, that's, that, but that's the language from the original policy, and that, it, in my mind, um, accommodates the type of complaints that have to be processed through our existing legal procedures, whether they're asserted by or against individual employees. But the superintendent's amendment strikes the phrase or against employees. Do you see what I'm talking about? Three E. It's it's in board docs. You can see it there as well. Four. Oh, I see. Well, then I, I would concur with I would concur with Mr. Deutsch that that should be included or against employees. Great. Can I can I make an amendment then to unstrike or against employees in this amendment? Yeah, I will concur. It's fine, um, and I'm going to do a, a hand vote on this. Any anybody opposed to withdrawing the strike against employees? Yes, the word where it says or against employees, we want to unstrike. Okay, so all in favor of taking out that strike? So we're going to reinsert an employee or against employees. We're okay with that. Okay, so based on the. We got to raise hands. Right. I mean, so I said if anyone was opposed, raise okay. your hand. Anyone opposed to it? Okay, that means the motion passes right. on striking that out. We're going to keep it simple. I don't want to have to retype amendments. So on this, you're going to just take out the strike for those three words, and you'll reinsert that. So we're going to vote on this now um, and put it up for please on the superintendent's draft. So just go for that. And you can take it out later. After the fact, it's fine. So, yeah, Ms. Williams. Um, I just, just for my own brain's sake, I just wanted to make sure it doesn't, that, that, so then that does not conflict with any of the laws that we have in place or policies for individual, for employees having against each other, because I know that we have specific things in place for that, and some are legal requirements. And it could just be that I'm, my brain is not processing it right, that, so I just, one more go around just makes you feel a little bit better. So my understanding of this is that the Office of the Ombudsman shall defer complaints by or against employees that are usually, that would otherwise be processed under existing procedures. But if they involve issues of systemic concern with the agreement of the school board, and uh, they may, then the Ombudsman could investigate or become involved in those type of systemic complaints. The idea is that only unusual systemic issues would he, he or she come to the board and say, look, I think we have a systemic problem involving with this. Will you authorize me to become involved in this particular issue? Thank you. I think I just needed it rephrased a little bit. Okay, please put it up for vote. Ms. Jesse. I just have a question on, I think it's section 3D, uh, the child abuse, suspected child abuse. Do we need to put, I know there's a policy on this, do we need to put that 
in there or just the, the word mandated reporter clarifies it, Mary? Mary, Ms. Williams was asking about... Um, Ms. Jesse. Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Jesse was asking about 3D. Yes. Do we, do we need to put the policy number in there or does the word mandated reporter uh, clarifies that is something that's required. I, I think it's it's perfectly fine without the policy. Okay, thank you. It's a it's a besides a policy, it's a law. Policy is a law. Okay. Please vote. I'll change vote. Try it again. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if it doesn't, if you get an error the first time, hit change vote and try it again. Okay. Oh, it says change vote. So this is when you vote yes, you're you're agreeing to the superintendent's draft edits minus those three words. We we put those three words back in for Mr. Deutsch. That's what we're voting on. So that'll approve the ombudsman policy. And as Mr. Trenum said, we'll move forward with that. And as anything, we can evolve and. Change is needed. I don't know why my thing still says change vote. Do I need to do anything, or did you get the vote? Yeah, I said yes twice. I might have voted twice. It'd be 9-0. That'll be the best vote ever. <laughs> the vote is eight yes, unanimous. Oh, Motion well, I was passed. going for nine. Okay, we're going to move on to board matters. Um, oh, no, we're at, we're at board matters. That's it. Is that... It's, we will move on to the comments of board members. Today we'll start with Mr. Deutsch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I'll be brief. Uh, one uh, important announcement uh, for the community. Uh, we have the Suicide Awareness Walk, uh, which is always a highlight of the spring. Uh, we also have coming up this Saturday at Hilton High School is the Kyle Wilson Memorial Walk. Uh, it's in conjunction with Kyle Wilson Elementary School uh, with the family. Uh, and we are remembering a, a local hero who gave his life uh, during a fire. Uh, and it's just uh, and it's an exciting time with the community, um, the school. And so if anybody's able to turn out, I uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be a great time. And there's going to be a whole lot of vendors, community groups, et cetera. So be sure and, uh, and come on out. Uh, also, uh, we've got uh, boundary time coming up. And uh, we've got our first boundary map. And it should be, uh, should be a lot of exciting uh, back and forth as we work through high school boundaries. Uh, I just want to throw out one thing for everybody's consideration as we work through these boundaries, uh, and that is uh, what numbers we're looking at. Uh, so a lot of the numbers that we have so far are both the um, boundaried areas with also transfer assumptions built in. Um, I am I'm concerned by those numbers. I think they're very problematic because we're drawing the boundaries for a particularly zoned area. Uh, and so I think we need to be focused on the numbers of how many people are generated in a zoned area. Uh, just as an example of the kind of challenge that creates, um, Osborne Park with the transfers into it is right at or a little over capacity. However, when you look at just the number of students that are zoned for Osborne Park, it's 1,000 students under capacity. So Osborne Park, we are relying heavily on transfers to be able to make that school work. Uh, and that's a, that's a problem. Uh, we should be, if we're drawing boundaries for a school, uh, we should be making sure that it's those boundaries that are um, you know, providing the students that we're expecting uh, and transfers are, are the icing on top um, to allow for you know, additional flexibility, et cetera. Um, so I think as we work through this process, we need to make sure that we're making all our decisions based on the numbers just of the students that are um, just of the attendance areas that we're boundarying. Otherwise, not quite sure why we're doing boundaries. Ms. Williams. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Go ahead. Did you have your? Did you have your oh, okay. Um, so there's seems like a thousand and one activities this weekend going on at all of our schools. Um, I'm very excited for Featherstone doing their, one of their first color runs this weekend, which will be really cool for the elementary school students. Um, but I also want like to echo Dr. Waltz's sentiment and congratulating uh, Fred Lynn on their fourth consecutive win for Battle of the Brains. I think that's very exciting. Um, 
I also would like to remind everyone um, participating in the CTE signing day, I believe there is a registration that needs to be completed, I think, by May 1st or 3rd. I know it's on our website. I got the dates mixed up. I apologize for that. But I think it's a very uh, cool time that we're going to have here at the Kelly Leadership Center to celebrate the students in career and technical education programs who are moving off to the military, full-time employment, or apprenticeship programs. Um, I also want to wish all of the teams going from Potomac and from Patriot, I think it is, uh, for the culinary competition this weekend. It cooks around the world at Disney. Um, it's very exciting for me personally because my son is going and I will be attending the trip as well. So I'm very excited to see our students. I know they placed second last year. Um, so I'm hoping for first placement this year. And I just want to wish everyone else in their activities, because it seems that there are a ton this weekend, um, the best of luck in good weather. And I hope everyone enjoys themselves and lessons learned from all of our school functions over the weekend. Ms. Jess. Uh, actually, I have just one item I wanted to bring to everyone's attention. And that is at the National School Board Association in Philadelphia, there was a lot of emphasis on equity. And um, on Monday, I went to Charlottesville. Uh, the Virginia Board of Education, School Board Association, has a Students for Challenging Schools uh, Committee. And we had a meeting there, a planning meeting. And attending was the superintendent for, of education for the state of Virginia and <clears throat> the governor and um, his office are really looking at these um, equity plans. And it's really, you're looking at several elements, which include equity and in just not just performance, but student performance, where it relates to uh, SAT, ACT, SOL performance, infrastructure, uh, and access, access to rigorous curriculum, uh, our graduation rate, and various other components. Um, I know that we are, I have met with Dr. Walt's staff and we're very much in the formative stages, but I think we're at a good place. So thank you. Ms. Ralston. All right, nothing. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first off, I need to explain something. I lost a bet. <laughs> so um, it was a great game. Um, and uh, UVA pulled it out in the end. They made the shots when they needed to, which was good. I will say that they had to play their best game of the tournament in order to win. So, um, and it took them into overtime. So don't get too cocky. Because um, we still remember last year. But anyway, so congratulations to UVA on their, uh, on their exciting win in the tournament. It took a little while, but you know, so I'm honoring, honoring my bet. Um, a couple things. Number one is I want to follow up on uh, Mr. Deutsch's comments about the boundaries for the 13th high school. The first one's out. Um, we'll see what, uh, though I'm sure there will be uh, some more uh, proposals come out as well. By all means, please, uh, parents, uh, community members, uh, provide us with your input. Uh, sooner, is, uh, sooner is better than later, but it's, it's always welcome. Um, and... Uh, Oh, and just to keep in mind, this is the last time we're scheduled to get high school seats into the western half of the county for about the next decade. So we need to get this right. Um, uh, the other thing I just want to remind folks is I uh, hope everybody had a great spring break. You're all back and everything. There are six and a half weeks of school left. <laughs> don't give up. Keep pushing. Do well. Miss Annabelle, don't let up. We know, we know you all want to be down in, in Blacksburg listening to Metallica on Saturday. So, all right. So anyway, thank you, everybody. That's it. Ms. Satterwhite. I think Mr. Trenum wants to be in Blacksburg on Saturday. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to let the Stonewall Middle School community know that there will be a community meeting on April 29th at 7 p.m. at Stonewall Middle School in the auditorium. This is regarding the proposed wireless tower project and um, encourage residents, um, families, anybody who's concerned or has questions, this is a great time for you to go and ask those questions. It is hosted by the company that is proposing putting in the wireless tower. And I definitely want to know your feedback on this also. Um, and speaking of musicals, Battlefield High School will be putting on the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee on May 2nd, May 3rd, 5th, 10th, and 12th. There are plenty of opportunities to come and enjoy our students. 
And uh, you can find more information on Twitter, the Battlefield Theater page. Um, you can get tickets at gofam.com. Um, I also attended the scoping meeting for the 13th High School, the first meeting for these new boundaries. And um, the first plan is out. Make sure you're going to the 13th High School portal and check out what the uh, first proposal is. There'll be another meeting coming up. Um, stay involved. Let us know what's going, what you would like to see happen. Um, when you send emails to staff through the, um, through the portal, feel free to copy your responses and send them to, to myself. And I, I think um, Mr. Trone and Mr. Deutsch might be interested in seeing your responses too. So look forward to seeing everybody at those meetings coming up. I was able to attend the Virginia School Board Association Regional Spring Forum. The topic was on ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. I want to thank Manassas City Public Schools for hosting that event for school board members. And um, that is all. Oh, also, I want to thank uh, Ms. Uh, Principal Joe Murgo for a great visit at Ronald Reagan Middle School on Tuesday. It was great to catch up with him and visit our Mustangs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Waltz, did you have anything to say? You're good. Okay. Um, Justin Wilk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, want to recognize, thank Forest Park for always coming in. Ms. Garrity for bringing your class in. Uh, I've known Raina Ketch um, for a number of years. She's involved in my wife's trauma program. Uh, she's a phenomenal person, and her story was very compelling. So I want to thank her for that. And Matt Jones, King Triton um, in The Little Mermaid um, with that voice. So he does do Broadway or uh, shows with that. So he's very good with that. Um, Anyways, so thank you, Forest Park, uh, and look forward to being at the suicide walk. Attended a couple of things before spring break, uh, Dumfries PTO parent meeting uh, at Dumfries Elementary School, second grade concert at Swans Creek Elementary, third grade co concert at Ashland Elementary, Henderson Elementary had a volunteer appreciation for parents right before spring break. I do want to recognize uh, Mayor Wood uh, of Dumfries. Um, Ms. Jesse was w with me at this event. Um, I think it's just us two. Um, a great event, the Mayor's Ball that he had over spring break. Uh, in downtown Dumfries, out first annual, um, the point is, I mean, he raised uh, thousands of dollars. I, I was, I asked him to give me a final total. I know he was still tallying that. I think it was like $15,000 or more uh, for students in Dumfries, uh, growing up in Dumfries to have some scholarships to college. So I want to commend him on that um, and, and the great work. Um, uh, and all those recognized, including uh, Miss Angela Savage, um, a, a math specialist at Dumfries Elementary, was recognized as the Dumfries Teacher of the Year. So that was a great event, the first annual. He'll be having another one next year. Uh, again, all the proceeds are going to raise money for students uh, in the town of Dumfries. Uh, and then this week, I did have the chance to visit Mary Williams Elementary and Potomac Middle School. Uh, still trying to be in. That was the first day back, welcoming people back. Students were half asleep, so that was fun. So uh, <laughs> didn't get the, uh, the day after Dr. Waltz came. So the celebrity status, that was, you know, so. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and have a good night, Dr. Latif. Thank you, excellent. So um, welcome back from spring break. As Mr. Trenum said, we have six weeks left of school. There's SOLs, there's final shows, performances, a lot of stuff going on. There's spring sports that are going on. Um, some great baseball at Potomac High School and some really good things happening. I want to especially thank Matt Guilfoy and Diane Galata for their the newsletter. If you haven't seen it, it's called Scoop. It goes out system-wide, is that correct? It is fantastic. It is an outstanding uh, piece of communication that I think, um, you know, if you get to click on it and look through it, you'll enjoy. It, it has a lot of great news in there. So our Positively PWCS can be seen all through that, and there's all far more stories than you'll see if you tune into our meeting tonight. Um, next, I want to thank, you know, one of the things about this job is being chairman, there's a lot of things I have to do behind the scenes or I have to meet with certain folks and try to figure out things and stuff that shows up on the agenda, sort out beforehand. I want to thank Amy White for her work for the conflict of interest policy that's going to be coming up and spending time coaching me through all the work that they have done and, 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 and I'm very excited about that. I want to thank John Wallingford, who's put up with me, you know, bugging him in his office. Um, we have put together one of the finest budgets the school system has seen in a long time. It's not over yet. April 30th, next Tuesday, is when the County Board of Supervisors will vote to finalize it. I want to remind the County Board of Supervisors that this board voted 8-0 on our budget that we presented to the County Board. board. Um, it was unanimous. It was comprehensive and it addressed 
critical needs, critical unmet needs. Any desire or you know consideration to not fund the schools on the budget we presented, I would consider um, not a good idea. So for all of you who support the schools, if you're watching on TV tonight, please call your County Board of Supervisor, call Chairman Stewart, let them know how happy you are with what we're doing. Um, let him know and let the County Board know that you support the budget and you support the county fully funding the school budget. I would truly appreciate that. So if you are watching tonight, that is something I would really like to see. Um, and thank you to Mr. Wallingford for you know coaching me through all of that. That's a lot of work, and I'm still learning. Um, like to thank uh, Dr. You know Waltz, and, and I don't like to repeat the stuff that everyone else has said, but they had a wonderful STEAM event at Colgan High School for uh, about 500 middle school girls. Um, you know, I, I, you know, many of you understand. I, I believe deeply in our, in our science programs. I believe we have to expand them, make them more robust. I will do anything I can to help with that, and that includes our math programs, and, and STEAM includes our arts. And so I am very focused on making sure that those programs are robust. Our budget this year does fund much of that and, and, and likes to expand it, but I want to do more of that. Um, that program that we had there, it was hosted by Gary Sims. The folks um, over at Colgan did a fantastic job. Gary Sims does this every year for the county, and he works with um, a number of vendors who all showed up. I want to thank them for coming and, uh, and participating and giving our students a lot of swag. Um, but I can't thank you all enough who are in this room, our staff, our superintendent. This was a very important budget season. So I can't emphasize enough, next Tuesday's vote is very important. I think it's the beginning of something, and I believe we can do more even next year. Um, Okay, great. And, um, and then I'm going to wrap up with today is administration, Administrator's Professional Day. Please recognize our, oh, yes. Administrative, administrative um, Professional Day. Administrative Professional Day. So I want to thank our clerks who do an outstanding job, five stars from Dr. Latif, um, for both of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you will get your paycheck on Friday. So that, that means you're still, still employed. But uh, thank you all very much. Have a wonderful week, guys. Thank you. M meeting adjourned.